Hello Sagittarius friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Sagittarius July 2021 Astrology Must Knows. Definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com so you can see direct links to all of the free goodies that I make for you every month and you can take full advantage of them. And if you'd like to be an astrologer as your work, go to B, B E astropro.com or my school at loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com, which also has some free courses that you may want to check out. Okay, so what's going on for Sagittarius? We've had a string of very exciting times for Sag. I am a fellow Sagittarius with you. I have multiple, multiple, lots actually, crazy amounts of Sagittarius placements. So I'm feeling all of the supercharged nature of this time with you and I'm excited to share my insights about the must knows ahead. So the first thing that is a major must know is that we are entering in July another one of those beautiful open periods that I always sing the praises about and this is between the personal planet retrogrades. So around July 8th through around September 8th We've got, so basically most of July, all of August and the first part of September, we've got a time that's amazing for launches. It's amazing for big decisions, clarity. One of the things that happens when we're in a, a retrograde, a personal retrograde time, personal planet retrograde time as we had been for the second half of May and for all of June and very early July, is that things that were certain get called into question and it's hard to make plans any further than the first or second steps just ahead of us. It's hard to see anything further than the first couple of steps ahead of us. So Sagis like to be able to look to the future and to be able to flow with the energies. And in these retrograde energies, sometimes it's difficult to, um, you know, we get a little rambunctious. So this is a very exciting time of open flow. More things that are very well supported during this brilliant launch period from around July 7th or around September 8th are engagements, weddings, big parties, travel, major plans, big agreements, major expensive purchases, redesign, redecorating, anything having to do with agreements, starting new businesses, adding different divisions onto businesses, looking for jobs, finding jobs, changing work, anything bold, anything important, moving, like your physical house, where you live, your housing, selling houses, buying houses, anything like that, investing, all of those types of things are the things that are amazing to do in this brilliant launch period from around July 7th through around September 8th, kind of those, those dates in there. So basically most of July, all of August, and the first part of September is just free flow in the stars. Another major must know, and this is very exciting news, is that we've got Venus and Mars making a rare transit together in the same sign, Leo. And this transit, which is rare, happens to also be happening in a fellow fire sign, which means that all of the goodies and magic that come from those planets moving together and hitting each other exactly, but really for around three weeks, which encompasses almost all of July, they're in close proximity to each other. And all of the movements that they make are going to be making kisses for Sagittarius placements. So money, all of your finances, big purchases, anything having to do with your relationships, your ambitions, your energy level and enthusiasm, your optimism, your creativity, things with your kids and true love and romance and your bucket list. All of these things are beautifully accentuated this time and I would not be surprised if you're seeing a, quite a few things get crossed off of the list of things you've been wanting to do. It is a supercharged time for creativity if you're working on a project you're very likely going to have a lot of sizzling progress. If you're trying to have a baby, this is amazing energy for that, or doing something special with kids that you already have, whether they're yours or somebody close to you, this is really beautiful energy. Plus leadership, anything having to do with getting your work seen, being out in front of people and helping others and inspiring others and feeling inspired yourself. Inspiration is going to be very, very, very expansive this month and that is very exciting. So that's going to be true for all Sag placements. And there's some extra goodies for those who are close to 19 degrees because around 
July 13th is when Venus and Mars get to the exact same position. And so both of those um, energies are going to be kissing each other and your Sag placement if you have something close to 19 degrees. So remember this report is for you if Sag is your moon sign, your sun sign, your rising sign, even if it's your Mercury or Venus or Mars. This is definitely for you. And if you are a late degree placement like me, if you're like from December 11th through the rest of the sign or so, or around 20 to 29 degrees if for your Sag placement. I also recommend you watch my Cap report, Capricorn report, because late degree, place, degree placements have a more complex read and you need to gather more information. So I highly recommend that you watch both. But in any case, back to this 19 degree beautiful aspect. So we'll say the days around December 9th or 10th are going to get the biggest smooch from this and we'll say anybody from around December 5th through around December 15th um, are also going to get special kisses from this and the closer to around the 10th you are, the more of a smoochy kiss. And then of course know that at the end of the month, the sun is getting into Leo. Those of you who are in the early degree placement, so basically November born, our Scorpitarius friends, are going to have extra special kisses from the sun at that time and the rest of you all December born Saggies um, or anybody from 10 to 29 degrees you'll get your sun kiss in August okay so lots of kisses from these beautiful fire placements one other thing that is exciting about the movements of these Leo placements is that in the Sagittarius chart the ninth house of Sagittarius is accentuated by Leo placements, which means that everything Saggy that we love, teaching, learning, different languages, spiritual pursuits, having inspiration, feeling connected to the all there is, long distance travel or studies, cultural studies, connecting with international people, anything possibly even having to do with international travel. Not everybody is going to get blessed by this. Not everybody's going to go travel internationally, but if you are a person who's been wanting to go, you might get your news this month that your big dream is going to work out for you soon. Okay, so your international energies are supercharged and um, things could move along in that department, including immigration or anything having to do with connections to foreign lands. This could also be a place far away from you, but in your own country. Like let's say you live in Florida and you go to Alaska. I know that I've seen that energy happen that way for me too, you know, because Alaska is very far from Florida. And even though it's not a different country, it certainly is represented by these long distance travel energies, which are accentuated for Saggies at this time. Okay, so another major must know is that we still are having after quakes and information and progress from the May and June eclipses. And this takes on special significance for Sagittarius placements because the eclipses are in the Sagittarius Gemini polarity. So from the middle of 2020 through the very beginning of 2022, we have eclipses and the transiting north and south nodes moving through Sagittarius and Gemini, which means that this is this period of time, this year and a half, is a time of major advancement on our highest expression path, clearing up of karma and stepping into Dharma. Okay, so this is like big, big, big time for Sagittarius's over a long period of time. And this particular time, like May, June, July, we have a lot of extra energy. You might see the life you've been trying to create for yourself or projects that you've been working on for a very long time starting to really take flight in May, June, and July. At the time I'm recording this, I'm seeing a lot of this myself. Um, and I'll give you news about the specifics about that particular project that is coming to light for me. And you are likely to see that too. So it's very, 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 very exciting. If you've got, if you've got information in May and June, eclipse related to your Dharma and karma, getting cleared up and getting on your highest path, July might really start to progress things forward in a wonderful way. And if those things involve creative projects or writing, Writing and publishing is so crazily aspected for Sages. And in fact, publishing is the area that is really lighting up for me like crazy. You've been seeing a lot of that going on for me during these eclipse cycles and more of it is expanding. And you might find that too. If you've been wanting to write a book or a blog or do something in those arenas, you've got a massive amount of awesome energy for that. Okay, so 
In general, the energies of Cancer are going to be very present, so home and family, returning to a place that feels like home or that you grew up in, or seeing people, family, whether they come to you or you go to them. The combination of travel and family is going to be supercharged at this time. So you will find a lot of that, where you're going to see people who are your family and friends, and you're going to do things with those people near and far. Now, this can bring some emotions that are hard also. You know, water energies are still water energies. They're highly emotional for better and worse. And Sag is still a fire sign. So whenever we have water energies, it does sometimes dampen our fire. But I see Venus and Mars as moving through Leo and then, of course, the sun getting there as well. And Mercury spending a lot of time in Gemini this month still. Of course, it had been retrograde, so we have an extra period of time of Mercury on our side. I see that as somehow offsetting the um, the extra emotional energy. So this might be an easier July than some Julys can tend to be for Sages, um, because all of this fire energy can offset the heaviness of the emotion. But it still will come up, and you may have to deal with other people's emotions or your own. But it could be a very positive thing too. Okay, and in general, your partnerships are going to be very strongly accentuated because the house that's accentuated by the cancer movements are your partnership areas of life. So anything involving loans or collaborations or contracts in working in conjunction with other people, taxes, investments, lotto and sweepstakes winnings, inheritances or anything having to do with um, estate planning, and deep spiritual work and breakthroughs are all also in line to be coming up in a big way. If you're feeling lucky or if you're wanting to do some investments or anything like that, you also have a massive amount of energy for that this month and you will have the clarity there, especially after the first week of July, like I talked about in that big open window from around July 8th or so through September 8th, of much more clarity for things like that, really for all things. Okay, you might also see notable things with your homes, housing, residence, and things having to do with working from home, home-based projects, um, you know, home expansion, improvements, anything with your housing or where you live or where you may want to live in the future, seeds could be getting planted for that. And also, um, let's see. Yeah, so you may be buying a house, selling a house, moving, anything like that is very strongly accentuated at this time. Now I want to talk about Jupiter. We've got a couple of things to talk about with Jupiter. The first is that Jupiter is still poking into Pisces for most of this month, although by the end of July it does get back into Aquarius. Aquarius is a much easier placement for Jupiter, for Sagittarius, than Pisces is. And you will get some hints of what that feels like in like this June-July time frame, and then at least fortunately for us, Jupiter does spin really quickly through Pisces in 2022, okay? Because sometimes that can put a damper on some of the Sagittarian things that we like to do, namely the publishing and the long distance travel and all of the you know things that I listed before, when it's squaring our placement as it does when it's in Pisces, but only those of you who are at the very early, like the like around November 23rd, the days around there, or the first few degrees of the sign, will really feel this the most at this time. And then the rest of us will really feel this next year in the early part. Um, but like I said, it will it will breeze through. But what it will also show you is things involving your housing. Okay, so we talked about cancer bringing up things with homes and housing and things like that. But we also have to talk about Jupiter affecting this space because even though it's only going to make an exact aspect with those of you in the very early, early degree placements, we still, from the whole house perspective, are having Jupiter starting to flavor this fourth house. Now, to get some ideas about what this can look like, think back to 2010 which is when Jupiter was in this um, place for us last time. I don't know about you all, but I had some pretty crazy things go on with my housing. I actually downsized from you know a, a big piece of land and house with, um, into a tiny home. And um, 
And there were certain aspects of that that were very difficult for me. Um, and there were certain aspects of it that was something that I really wanted and had wanted to do for a while. Um, so big changes to your home and housing could be happening. And the key note here, which is a must know, is the energy of freedom in your housing. And freedom in your housing is a very subjective experience. So for instance, somebody could buy a bigger house and feel more free in that house because they have more room. And so the energy of, of Jupiter comes to the expansion and the space. But for some people, having a tiny home could be their Jupiter expansion because they don't have to be married to their mortgage. And so that experience of expansion and freedom is coming from low overhead. Sometimes Jupiter in that area will bring in more roommates or people into your house, including children or a spouse or a partner. And sometimes it can give you freedom from that energy, like somebody leaves the house or roommates change or you know, you somehow more, have more space and more um, freedom in your house. So, and for some people, the subjective experience could be something like moving to the city. Some people feel more free moving from the city because they have all of the, into the city because they have all these options for freedom roaming, right? Some people feel more free moving into a rural area. So again, you know, how this is going to affect you is going to be very subjective, but you're going to start to have hints of what this is going to look like in this period of time of like June, July, you'll start really kind of getting a sense of some things that might be coming in the future from Jupiter when it goes back there. Okay, now the second must know is that Jupiter is done with the big kisses for everybody from zero to 21 degrees and basically that's going to be november born through around december 10th or so but if you're near december 10th you it depends on where the sun was exactly when you were born and this this is different for everybody each year so in the days around december 10th through the rest of the sign or 22 degrees or so through the rest of the sign if you have any sag placements in those designations you are getting multiple kisses from Jupiter. You can see more about this by searching for my video called Jupiter in Aquarius for Sagittarius. If you're on YouTube, you can look at my homepage and see the Jupiter in Aquarius playlist, or you can, if you're listening to the podcast, you can search organically for Jupiter in Aquarius for Sagittarius, and you can find that there for the video. Um, and that will go into more information of what Jupiter in Aquarius looks like for all placements. So I highly recommend you watch this because remember Jupiter's our ruler. So we wanna really know what the heck is going on in every facet of information you can get about Jupiter and how it, how it you know, affects Sagittarius is something you really wanna be getting up on because it's, it's a really big deal. But those of you in those designations, you have more kisses coming, okay? And those kisses are going to start again at the end of July, all right? And then you'll feel them for the whole rest of the year. So that's very exciting. But if you're not in that designation, don't worry. Just Jupiter being in Aquarius is super inspiring and adding lots of fuel to your Sagittarian fire. So everybody can celebrate. Okay, so two more points I wanted to discuss. One is this combination of Cancer energies with the Leo energies is making me have this vision of this pot holding the water, the water being the emotion, the cancer, and then this big old flame under that pot, okay? And that's the fire energies of Leo. So emotions, for better and worse, will have this flame and things will get stirred up, but it can be very productive. You can make tea out of it, you can make energy out of it, you can make steam out of it. So, you know, just kind of remember that as a theme for this month is that things are coming to a boil and it can be so productive and many, many, many things are going to come to pass for Sagittarius this month. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about is a little list of fire air kisses. We've got some beautiful fire air aspects this month and I'm going to give you some dates. Actually, before I do that, there is one other thing I wanted to mention. We do have quite a few oppositions this month and also we have double the salty aspects compared to the sweet aspects this month. And we will feel 
some of that, you know, little bumps and roadblocks and stuff like that. I think overall, Sag has a lot of extra protection and a lot of extra buoyancy at this time, but we will see that. And how we might see it is some resistance or we might have to work a little bit harder to get at the gold. Like you might be working really hard, but you'll be, you'll be really pleased with the outcomes or it's working hard doing things you've really been wanting to do. So those are ways that it can manifest. So this energy of resistance that might come this month can be majorly transformed, first of all, alchemically into gold, right? You might have to work a little harder for some of it, but that's okay. And second of all, resistance is the, the juice and, the, and the, uh, a key, a major key to life. In situations where things are too easy and where we don't really have to do something, especially sages, right? We can get in our flow and just be like, don't stand in front of me, I just wanna walk this way, don't get in front of, I'm just trying to flow here, right? We love our flow, flow reigns supreme in the life of Sagittarius. So sometimes we need a little bit of resistance and a little bit of corralling to get us on a straight and narrow path because we spin in circles and move side to side and get random and get distracted and sidetracked. And so this resistance, although we will feel it in various ways that might not feel very good all the time, I think overall it's a very positive thing because it does keep us on the straight and narrow path to our destiny and to possibly our highest destiny the more we focus on that. Okay, so now let's talk about these fire and um, fire and air kisses. Let's look at the dates here. We got on July 2nd and then July 7th, first a Mars and then a Venus trine with Chiron. So their whole first week of July has some extra kisses for everyone in the zodiac, but especially the fire and air signs. And this has to do with things that were a problem for you or a wound, whether it's physically or with your self-confidence or something that happened in your life with some kind of weakness, you either turn them into a strength or you benefit from healing work that you've done in the present or the past. Okay, so lots of blessings from those types of healings going on. And also, it's again, like I said, helpful for everybody this aspect, but those of you close to 12 degrees, so that's going to be like the last days of November and the first like week or so of December, um, or between like seven and 17 degrees, the closer to 12 degrees, the more you'll get the kisses from the Venus and Mars trine with um, Chiron, okay? and. Then we already talked about how we have the, the beautiful kisses from Venus and Mars going through and, and kissing every Sag placement, and we talked about the 19 degrees. Um, but it is July 13th that that exact conjunction between Venus and Mars happens, so look out for extra goodies at that time. Then we've got on July 17th and the days around it, right? Because we don't just feel things often on one day. There's usually an orb of energy depending on what the aspect is. And so for the full moon, we often feel that two to three days before and after. So we've got a full moon in Aquarius, a wonderful aspect for you all. And so things can come to a head, be elucidated, you know, um, mischief can happen as we've always seen like in movies and stuff, the full moon is always there in the background when there's mischief and things going on. But this is also very spiritual and also um, bringing things to head that might seem a little stressful at first, but can then, you know, help you resolve the problem. Remember that anything having to do with unconscious factors that are directing our lives, which is what astrology is basically, conscious and unconscious factors that are directing our lives, they get accentuated by the movements of the planets. And when they connect in mathematically with our own imprint from where the stars were when we were born, then it activates things in our lives and brings the unconscious into the conscious experience. And so for better and worse, we are able to get things out of us and out into the open where they can be more clear. But since this is a nice angle for Sag, I'm hoping that this is a positive thing. And the, um, the people around November 23rd, like the, the birthday is right at the beginning there or close to one degree, 
you all are going to get extra kisses from this placement. Now, I do also suggest that you look for how to run a free birth chart online so that you can look at the different, you might have more than one Sagittarius placement. It's good to know the degrees and placements that you have so that you can use all of the work that I do every month with drilling down into these degrees, um, use these in even greater ways. So overall, another very exciting month for Sagittarius. As a Sagittarius myself, I'm very excited about this month and I hope that it manifests in magical, wonderful ways for you. If you would like even more information about the starry opportunities ahead, then definitely go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and sign up for my free email newsletter list. I only send out a few emails a month and they are all chock full of how you can make the most of the starry opportunities. Plus you get all kinds of other VIP freebies and extra exclusive things by being a member of my email list. Since most of the work I do for you is free, it's hard to sometimes keep track of everything I do. I do have information when you click on the more button in the, um, on this video, or if you're listening to the podcast version in the notes underneath the podcast, you can connect in with all of these free things I do, the podcast, the videos, the blogs, the interviews, and all kinds of goodies. And now at AnnieHelpsYou.com, right on the front page, I have a better organized list of all of these resources so you can check that monthly and be taking advantage of all the things I do for you. If you would like to be an astrologer as your profession, make sure that you go to LoomLife.com, L-U-M-E, Life.com, my school, Luminous Life Multiversity. You will find free courses there as well, and you will find my paid courses. And one of the paid courses is this astrology program, Becoming a Professional Astrologer Mastery Course. If you think I put a lot of details into my free offerings, you should see what I do in my paid offerings. It's really, really, really comprehensive. So I can definitely teach you everything you need to know to be a successful professional astrologer, earning money for your love for astrology. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.